Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Mindfulness in Plain English. An Introductory Guide to Deeper States of Meditation. By Hannah Polnagunaratana. Is there anything in particular that you believe will bring you lasting happiness? The answer to this question depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Life isn't always as fulfilling or meaningful as we'd like it to be for many of us, and we tend to place the blame on what we don't have rather than what we do. Many of us create our own anxieties and believe that things, people, and relationships can alleviate our feelings of inadequacy and longing. There's no better way to learn about the benefits of mindfulness and meditation than with mindfulness in plain English. This book is a lifeline for anyone who is searching for purpose and self-awareness, or who is simply dissatisfied with their lot in life. It is hoped that the lessons will help us cultivate feelings of inner peace and tranquility, and reveal that true happiness really does come from within. It allows us to control the typical and predictable behaviors that arise when we're upset, unsatisfied, or irritated by probing feelings beneath the surface. Being mindful allows us to better anticipate and deal with our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Mindfulness is a powerful tool for cultivating peace and happiness, and eradicating negative feelings like selfishness and a need for immediate gratification from material objects. In the short term, buying a new item may make us feel better about ourselves, but it doesn't solve the problem long term. In order to satisfy our narcissistic impulses, we keep acquiring more and more material possessions. As a result, how do we learn to control our cravings, desires, and desires? Bhante Gunaratana is a well-known monk and teacher, as well as an author and the founder of a retreat center and monastery. With his emphasis on meditation and mindfulness, he hopes to demonstrate how we can be more at peace with ourselves and kind to those around us. Let's take a brief look at meditation and mindfulness, and how they can help us lead richer and more fulfilling lives. Many people find meditation a little too out there for their tastes. Those who practice yoga, mindfulness, and other so-called alternative forms of meditation have found success with the concept of meditation. Is it possible that you've painted images of how meditation looks, or what people who meditate look like in your mind? Because meditation and mindfulness are yours to perform in your own unique way, keeping this in mind may help ease your resistance. It's not about doing what other people are doing or what you think you should be doing when it comes to meditation and mindfulness. Maybe you're not interested because you believe you can handle whatever life throws at you and that you don't have any problems that require attention? Possibly you believe yourself to be content and happy? There are many ways in which we can improve our well-being by enhancing our ability to cope with life's challenges. In the end, self-improvement is more of a journey than a destination. If you're willing to put in the effort, the results are worth it. Meditation explained in everyday language. Meditation jargon can turn you off from the practice, as you've probably encountered someone who goes on and on and on about it. Maybe you've seen subscription-based apps on your phone that claim to provide instant gratification? There is no need for meditation to be difficult, this book covers the fundamentals of Vipassana meditation. First and foremost, it requires focus. The cultivation of mindfulness and self-awareness begins with the development of focused attention. There are many benefits to cultivating self-awareness and mindfulness. Pause for a moment and take a moment to appreciate the silence. Those voices in your head are probably going crazy, aren't they? Even if you think it's quiet. It's possible that they're nagging you to get things done. A slice of cake might be the only thing on your mind. As a result, you begin to wonder about the name of the place you once visited, where they serve some of the best cakes, before realizing the time is running out on your project and deciding to get back to it. And the cycle continues indefinitely. Despite the fact that our thoughts can be both amusing and distracting, they often hold us hostage. We're constantly bombarded with stimuli in modern society. Isn't it amazing how many things we see, hear and smell every day? Whenever one of these factors is taken into consideration, a wave of emotions and thoughts is generated. Meditation practices allow us to become more self-aware when confronted with stimuli, and instead of participating in the experience, we become observers. This is critical because as our self-awareness grows, so does our ability to resist the pull of habit, temptation, and impulsive behavior. Meditation isn't for me because I lack patience or time. Meditation is all about cultivating the right mindset. It's not a competition, so you don't have to be the best. Meditation is not a competition, and there are no prizes or medals for doing it correctly. Being open-minded, sensitive, and self-aware are all important components of having the right attitude. When it comes to meditation, we all have our own ideas of what it should be like. A lot of what we think we know is based on what we've seen on TV, 
and that can be a scary thing to confront. The best way to look at meditation is as a self-experiment. Make no assumptions about how it will feel, and don't bring any preconceptions into the experience. Let's just see what happens if we just go with it. It's important to remember that meditation should never be rushed or hasty. Allowing yourself to surrender to the process rather than striving for a specific outcome is the best way to embrace the journey. During meditation, be honest with yourself, whatever you feel or experience is fine. Accept the feelings that come up and move them aside. You don't have to feel guilty. Finally, refrain from getting too caught up in any one thing. You must be aware of your thoughts, but you should not dwell on them. Make the effort to acknowledge their presence before moving on. The process can begin once you've adopted an open-minded attitude and managed your expectations. When it comes to your meditation routine, don't get caught up in the minutiae of the time. Several mental and emotional blocks to meditation stem from the concept of time. Start with 10 to 20 minutes and don't worry about the clock, because it only adds stress to our lives. The clock's purpose should not be to put you under stress, but to document the process. It's time to relax and enjoy yourself. Meditation does not necessitate sitting cross-legged on a cold floor. Simply find a position that you can stay in for the duration of your practice and you'll be set. To help you settle in and figure out what works best for you, the authors of Mindfulness in Plain English offer a wealth of practical advice. Starting your meditation practice early in the day can help you get a jump start on your day, but you may also find that meditating before bed works best for you. Start with a single daily meditation, and as you become more in tune with your body and what it needs, you may want to add another. Find a position that is comfortable and sustainable, whether you're sitting on the floor or in a chair. Sit with your back straight, but don't overdo it and make yourself uncomfortable. All you need is a comfortable, straight back. Wearing the appropriate clothing is an important part of feeling at ease. It's best to wear a loose-fitting clothing and remove your shoes to avoid constriction of your limbs. That's all there is to it. You're now ready to get started. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes as soon as you're settled in a comfortable position and completely still. Focus your attention on your nostrils as you take three slow, deep breaths. Breathe in and out, and all of the pauses in between, and you'll be fine. Rather than focusing on this, just pay attention to your breathing. The one thing you can count on when you do this is for your thoughts to wander. Tips for reinvigorating your breathing are provided in the book. Counting is a great way to keep yourself from getting sidetracked while you're working. You should count one as you inhale and two as you exhale. Inhale and exhale 10 times, or count to 10 while inhaling and exhaling. Breathing will eventually become the only thing on your mind, so you'll be able to stop counting. Do you recall the promise that your thoughts would stray? You'll have to accept it. When your thoughts start to stray, the last thing you want to do is get frustrated or angry with yourself. Meditating isn't about making yourself perfect, it's about learning to become more self-aware. You'll only make things worse if you're too hard on yourself and constantly point out the things you're doing wrong. Recognize and refocus when your thoughts stray. Then try again. Decide to be kind to others. It is possible to bring more kindness, peace, and tranquility into the world through meditation and mindfulness. Beautiful recitations in this book wish others well and emphasize the importance of kindness and compassion. To keep one's ego in check and to put others' needs ahead of one's own, it helps to wish others kindness and well-being. Gratitude, as well as being positive and well-intentioned, are excellent defenses against resentment, bitterness, and judgmental thoughts. Focusing on forgiveness is a powerful and illuminating theme in the book. Let go of resentment and hatred toward you and those who have harmed you. Recognize that everyone is going through difficult times. The more you help others, the fewer people you'll have to worry about making enemies. Go for contentment. Life becomes a lot easier when we accept that we can't have everything we want. Furthermore, we will gain a greater appreciation for the present moment if we recognize and accept the transient nature of our experiences. It's important to remember that all things eventually come to an end. Bad things happen in our lives, but it is these moments that teach us most and help us appreciate our lives. We miss out on life's richness if we spend our time seeking pleasure while avoiding pain. Making the decision to live in harmony means putting an end to the constant barrage of noise and interruption. We also feel more fulfilled because we don't have to rely on things like desires or cravings to make us feel happy. The book argues that by removing psychic irritants from our minds, we can better understand our own values and the values of others. To sum it up, learning from meditation and becoming more aware of ourselves helps us see the world more clearly. The range of feelings and emotions you will encounter as a result of meditating with mindfulness is wide-ranging. It may be difficult to confront these feelings and emotions, but they are an essential part of the journey toward self-awareness and enlightenment. This book, Mindfulness in Plain English, 
is a great resource for learning about and dealing with these emotions. There is no denying that the world is ever-changing and evolving, as we know. This is out of our hands, and that can be frightening at times. Not only is the world changing, but we, as individuals, are also growing older with each passing minute. We've all had those moments where we wonder how we got to be the age we are, and how quickly the years have flown past. We become more aware of the fleeting and transient nature of life in the world when we practice mindfulness and meditation. Satisfaction is often seen as something that can be purchased. Being a human being is a great source of contentment and gratitude in the face of adversity. Satisfy yourself by being kind and empathic, and then give generously. Meditation, despite its solitary nature, teaches us that we are all connected to the rest of the universe. All of us are a part of a family, a neighborhood, and a larger society. It's only after we've worked through our ego issues that we can truly see how our actions have consequences. We gain a deeper sense of morality and wisdom through meditation, which begins with concentration. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.